God bless you, Facebook family. I told you I would come on a live today with the prophetic alert. I want to give people a chance to start logging in. And my husband is with me. I've been really praying and seeking the face of the Lord for this time. And with everything that's happening with the news and things that's going on with churches and leaders are leaving here left and right. Um, I really wanted to hear from God. I want to share with you um, about some of the things that God spoke to me when I was in my shut-in. Hi, Mary. I'm glad you tuned in all the way from Japan. And I'm just giving y'all a chance. Hi, Denise. Mary. I'm glad you tuned in. I want to give people a chance to log in before I start because this is so... This is an exciting time. Thank you, Denise, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Coney, my sister Anne. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you so much for joining in. I have some special uh, ex expecting God to really move today. Um, just, just want you to know that this is such a strategic time. I know people are still logging in. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you so much for logging in. I want to give you what God has spoken to me to give the people of God today. Hi, Greg. Just so glad. Those of you, I want to give you, we're going to give you a couple of minutes for everybody to join in. Hi, Pastor Mingo. Uh, just so good to have you join us in. Uh, join in with us. We have my husband. And this, and this is a prophetic alert. <clears throat> God spoke this thing to me. I've been seeking the face of God. He's been waking me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm just really, really, part of me is uh, grieving my spirit about some things that's happening in the body of Christ and just with world issues and just want to prepare us. We're going to be talking. I want to be talking today about what's going on in your region. Uh, some of you, the struggle. Uh, I just have a word from God. He gave me this word. I've been traveling, preaching this one word. And I'm expecting God to just really set a lot of people free. I'm uh, home this weekend. I'm getting ready on Sunday. I will be speaking at Pastor Renee Hornbuckle's church. And then on Wednesday, I'll be traveling to London and to, to Nigeria. Um, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just excited about what God is doing. But at the same time, I really want to share with you what the Lord spoke to my heart. I want my husband to greet you as people are still logging on. I want to give everybody a chance. It's so good to see. Uh, let's see who's on. Sister Annie. Mike Cohen. Uh, Cowan. Oh, man, it's good to hear from you, man. Bless you. Bless you. All the wonderful people that are tuning in. Um, I believe this is a moment. This is a time. It's a Kairos moment. That means an appointed time. You know that anything God does is always an appointed time. God doesn't do anything haphazardly. Everything he does has an appointed time. That's why the Bible calls it a due season. In due season, you will reap. The only thing that you and I have to do is make sure that we stand fast, unmovable, until that due season arrives. And I believe tonight and today, wherever you might be watching, right now there are people tuning in from uh, all over the, over the globe. That's one of the wonderful things about this, this Facebook Live. You can reach hundreds of thousands of people in just mere seconds. So get excited, get ready, get your spiritual tunes. Who else? Oh, Pastor Willie. God bless you, Pastor. Good to uh, see that you're and on Sabi tonight. Pastor Victoria joined Pastor us. Pastor Victoria, awesome. And Sarah Alray from London. So so excited about awesome. that. Awesome. I want to give people a, a couple of minutes to join us before I release this prophetic mm -hmm. um, is a word to the to the body of Christ. I think is is so strategic at this time. Uh, like I said, I've been really seeking the face of the Lord. I went on a Florida tour, and we have just seen God's hand move in all areas. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about the things that God is doing and uh, the schedule. Just, just, just being this is this moment of uh, telling you about the visitation that I have from God in the month of January, leading up to now. I had no such a powerful way that I was just like just I was just really really blown away with the what, what God is doing. So I'm giving people a chance. In a couple of minutes, we'll start going. I'm gonna be praying. You're going to hear from God, and afterwards, we're going to put this on YouTube, so call people, tell them to log in, tell them there's a prophetic alert, and um, I think God is causing the prophets to arise, and feel free to share this video, we'll be putting it, like I said, on YouTube, but feel free to share this video after we get through giving you the word of the Lord, okay, because it's really, really a time, hi, Bishop, 
Hooper, uh, hi Alexis, so good to uh, hear Bishop from you. Bishop Hooper, bless you. Alexis, you better call me back. <laughs> and Bishop, all the way from um, Texas. Yes, just a little south of us. We're here live, actually, from the beautiful city of Dallas, Texas. We have a beautiful skyline that uh, we're looking in, and uh, as we are looking, we're thinking about you. We're praying for you. We're believing God. Um, we are in some very peculiar moments in time in history. This is, this is a period of time, uh, it's like the, the scripture said, that this is a place we've never been before. And we need a sure, direct word from God to help us navigate through the times in which we live right now. So feel free to make sure you share this with a friend. I know the word that's going to come forth is going to be a mighty blessing to your heart, to your mind, to your spirit, to your soul, to help you stand fast. Believe God uh, in the midst of everything that's happening around you. Yes. You can understand that God will never leave nor forsake you. He's got a purpose that's intact. It doesn't matter of fact, the very fact that the enemy would bring all manner of uh, uh, weapons against us, that lets us know that God is up to something. Because if God was not up to something for you, you wouldn't be going through the things that you're facing right now. So all we're here today is to join our faith with your faith. And watch what God does. Amen. But I also, not only to join our faith with your faith, but uh -huh. we're here to also give you exactly the word that God has spoken to me. I believe that this is going to be an answer to so many of your prayers. <laughs> because I, as I travel and even when uh, listening to some of my partners that have been writing in with their prayer requests, I cry out to God for you. I've been not been able to sleep. Probably since I've been in the shut-in in January, and all night I get up every morning. Normally I'm up about 3 o'clock in the morning. And so I start praying about 4 or 5, around about 6. But, you know, just, just asking God. I really want God to bless you. I know sometimes it brings tears to my eyes to see some of the things that you guys have been going through. And I think that this is going to be an answer to what God is really trying to do we thank god for tammy and 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 you know to really encourage you uh the bible says in psalm 143 hear my prayer o lord give my ear to my supplication in thy faithfulness answer me and in thy righteousness and so this is someone crying out to god and giving supplications to god being faithful and many of you have been so faithful to god you've been crying out to god and you're saying god why am i not experiencing the increase that i should be experienced why is it seem why does it seem like the success i should have i'm not having it looks like everybody else is having a success why i'm not married yet why am i not having a baby i've been trying for years um why haven't my business grow why have my ministry grown um, why am I dealing with this sickness? We've had so many people that's been attacked with cancer, and we're going to address that on tonight. Uh, tonight, So many people been attacked with cancer. So many people been attacking their finances. And, 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 you know, God said in his word, Beloved, I wish upon all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul shall prosper, your soul will prosper. And also people who are dealing with rejection and depression. And, you know, after going through all the stuff that I've gone through, I just know that God does not want us to be in that situation. And so... The word that he gave me on today, um, uh, it's just been dealing with me a whole the whole month. I've been preaching in different churches, and we've seen a move of God take place. God spoke to me and told me, I do not want you to go on engagements. I want you to go on assignment. So even though all the engagements that God has blessed me with, he said, I don't want you to release this. I don't want to really, I don't want you to release that anointing that I place upon you in every, in all, any, in just anybody's church. He says, I'm going to send you to the ones that I have assigned you to. You know, Elijah was assigned to the Shunammite woman. Mm -hmm. He was assigned yeah. to the widow that was about to die with her son. Mm -hmm. So there are people who I've been assigned to, and I believe they are you today. So let's really get into the word. Let me give you the prophetic word. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now in Jesus' name, God, even as I speak the word that you have given me, let it come forth with clarity, God. Transform us, God. Change our lives from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from power to power that we will be more like you, my Heavenly Father. And God, even as I speak the word, 
God, let it be su such a life-changing word. I give you glory and honor for it, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the word that the Lord gave me today, I just want to give you some clarity of it. Um, we've been really, really dealing with, some of you are looking at the, um, the situation with the government and what's been going on in the White House. Uh, you also been seeing the situation where we're dealing with uh, our young people. It's like the, the, they're they're getting so far away from what God really want them to do, and and it's important that we as believers pass the baton to the next generation. And so, if we don't have ourselves together. We're going to breed a generation that's not, they're going to embrace the things of other people and not come to the true and living God. So as we get into the word, I want to go into um, the scripture that was really transforming to me. And when God spoke and I, I want to go to um, Joshua. Um, and it's, it's really kind of, it's really kind of weird, you know, because I was sharing with the people in Joshua, the first chapter, God spoke to Joshua and he said, Joshua, now Joshua, the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord is came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses ministries, minister saying, Moses, my servant is dead. See what God was really speaking is he brought an end to a move and in order for a beginning to come. So it's important that Joshua knew that it's a in, not to neglect the old, but I need you to understand that the way I moved then would be totally different how I'm going to move now. So God was speaking to him and saying, the move that I did with Moses is totally different than what I'm going to do with you, Joshua. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, and we're not careful, because we've had success in the past moves, we don't want to leave there. But God is a God that's constantly in motion. And he wants us to keep on moving forth in the things of God. So as we look at this, he said to Joshua, he says, Moses is dead. And you know, I want you to understand, there's been a lot of move of God that's taken place and has taken place in the past. And God is saying that we're still trying to hold on to some of the old things, which is affecting what he's trying to do for you in the new, in the new season. You know, he said, behold, I will give you new things. He said, he says, and when, when, when it comes, you might not recognize it. And a lot of times we don't recognize it because it's not familiar with us. So many things has happened. So I need you to understand. I've had so many of my friends that have uh, had, had curves thrown at them and they weren't prepared for it. They didn't know that, hi Kelly, I was just getting ready to say something about you. They, were, they didn't know that their husband was going to pass away. They didn't know that they were going to end up having to pass to the church. Or they didn't know that they were going to end up not having a spouse. Or maybe something happened to their children and their sister died from cancer and all these things. So when we're looking at Joshua, God tells Joshua something that's real. He says, Moses, our servant is dead. He said, but every place that thy soul of your feet shall tread upon that I give it unto you, as I said unto Moses. And the thing that we need to understand when I think about um, Kelly Lane and her husband, there's some covenant, there's a covenant that God made with the, 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 the patriots of the old that he says, as I was with them, so would I be with you. And when we're entering new territory and we're so used to leaning on those people in the past, whether it's our spouses or our leaders, our pastor, and when they leave and when they go on, we don't know what to do. But God says, but as I was with them, I'm going to be with you. As I move for Moses, I'm going to move for you. Amen. And I'm here to let you know that God said that that struggle that you've been dealing with in, inwardly, can I live up to what Moses did? Can I live up to what my husband did? Can I live up to what my pastor did? And God is saying, 
Now, this is something he said to, he says, uh, the sixth verse, be strong and of good courage for until his people shall thy divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give thee. Only be thy strong and very courageous that thy may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. See, God didn't do away with Moses did because Moses, right, right. Moses, Moses wasn't perfect. But he stood on the word of God. And he says, as Moses held on to my word, I want you to hold on to my word. He said, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. And when we're going in turmoil, it's easy for us to look to other people, look to other things. How are we going to grow our church? How are we going to grow our ministry? Oh, God, how are we going to do this? How are we going to build this building? How in the world are we going to be able to, 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 to build this when my pastor was here or my husband was here? Everything was fine. And so now God has you out of your comfort zone because the Lord said, you're going to trust me. My favorite scripture is some folks trust in chariots and horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and they shall be saved. And you need to understand the same God that was with your husband, the same God that was with the bishop or your pastor. Uh, some of the patriots are leaving here. Uh, we had a pastor just left here in Tampa. We had Kim Clement. This, and you're like, God, what in the world is going on? But you notice that God kept telling Joshua to be strong. He told him more than once. He said, be of good courage because there's some challenges that Joshua's going to have to face, that it was going to take the encouraging word of the Lord. And I'm here to let you know right now, the challenges that you are facing, God is saying prophetically to you, be strong and be of good courage. Because he says the same God that was with your husband or the same God that was with your pastor, the same God that your mom taught you, the same one that you saw them walk by faith, he says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. For I will never leave you, nor will I I forsake you. So Joshua was getting ready to go into some issues that he had never experienced. Then we look into verse 8. In verse 8, God speaks to Joshua and said, Joshua, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise and go up to I.E. I've given you unto thy hand the king of I.E. and his people and the king and his and city and his land. See, but what you need to understand is I.E. had already defeated Joshua. Joshua was defeated by I.E. And so here God is telling him to go back to the very place mm -hmm. where he was defeated. And let me tell you something. That's a prophetic word from the Lord. I was sharing this in, um, in Gainesville, but God is speaking to even deeper. You know, the very thing that you thought that you were rejected, the very thing that you lost everything. Some of you started businesses and, and you just say, forget it. But God says, go back, pick that plan back up again. Pick it up again. I'm going to take you back to that same place where you were defeated, where you were rejected, when the people talked about you, when they said that you would never be anything, when they said this ministry would not go, would not flourish, when they said that that when that you're not going to get a financial breakthrough when you lost everything. I know what that feels when the cancer has taken your body. You at stage four, and the doctors are saying, "I don't know what to tell you because I'm," but but we can't do anything. And that's when when God told Joshua to go back to the very place where he was defeated and I'm letting you know but he said but when you go this time I'm going to give you a different strategy see that's why it's so good to understand God says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through pulling down of the strongholds you know strongholds so God says the weapons that I'm going to give you to defeat the very thing that almost took you out oh my God the very thing that almost destroy you, the very thing that almost caused you to lose your mind, the very thing that caused you to not want to get up in the morning, the very thing that came to you and told you nobody cared, nobody understood you, uh, you were dealing with suicidal spirits, sickness and diseases, 
financial difficulties. And God has said, we, and you said, I don't want to deal with that no more. I don't want the ministry anymore. I don't want to do my business anymore. I failed five times. You don't understand. I failed so many times. I opened up churches after churches. Nothing that happened. And God says, go back and do it again. But this time it's going to be different. My God, glory to God. I feel the presence of the Lord because this time cancer has got to dissolve. This time financial breakthroughs, poverty must be eradicated in your life right now. Sickness and disease, it's got to go because the Lord is giving you a word. Be of good courage for the Lord says every way your feet tread upon you will possess it. Some of you better put your army boots on and just go ahead and walk. God is not, not in the warfare right now. We've done all the warfare that we're supposed to do in this season. There's a spirit of peace and tranquility that God says, go possess what I've already ordained for you. Some of you just don't, don't even have the energy to do warfare. If I had to keep doing warfare, I would be so tired. But God said, this is a season that I've already fought the battle for you. I knew what was going to happen. I have a plan for your life and you're going to see things begin to manifest in your life like never before so this is the thing that was so crazy so here Joshua texts a group of people he texts his army and he gets ready to defeat the enemy God gives him a strategy like God's gonna give you a strategy and how your church is see how you used to run church before is not gonna happen I'm telling you breakthroughs are coming God's getting ready to raise up People of God that will be so skilled in finances, that will be so skilled. I was reading the word of God. We were talking about in Isaiah when it says the Minions and the Shebas are coming. And what are they coming from? They're coming to be a blessing to you. Those are traders. Those are business people. God is beginning to draw business people to your ministry. Draw business people to your vision. He's going to draw business people to make sure that what you need, it will be provided. This is not a season of lack. This is not a season of despair. This is not a season of quitting. Because if you quit, you'll never experience what is about to happen. There's a burst of fresh air in the atmosphere. And God is about to do some crazy stuff. The stuff that he used, you know, used to take years to do. You're going to go to bed one day, wake up another way. You'll go to bed broke, wake up a millionaire. And you will not have caught the lotto. It will be that God will begin to work some things out even while you're sleeping. And God is causing businesses to be attracted to you. He's causing people with money to be attracted to you. And there are people with money right now that don't have money issues but yet they don't have peace in their mind yet they're dealing with cancer yet they're dealing with things that money cannot buy God is getting ready to bring reconciliation to families my God to families so let me just tell you this the word that God gave me is called reset he gave me this word even on last year so God says, I'm going to reset the system. I'm resetting the system. And so I've been doing teaching on resetting. So let me give you this. When God spoke to Elijah and told him to go to the woman's house and uh, she made an apartment for him. See, anytime you give it to a prophet, anytime you bless the prophetic anointing in someone's life, God can't help but that prophet, if they have a heart of God, when you sow seeds into their lives, they have, they can go to, they could, they have an audience with God that they could speak because they're representing God's kingdom to God on your behalf. And so that's what Elijah did. So what does this woman need? So she need a baby. He said, by this time next year, she get ready to have a baby. So let me just tell you this. By this time next year, you would not be in the same situation that you're in now. In fact, in less than six months. Huh, we're talking about by this time next year because it takes like nine months to have a baby. Some of you about to give birth to your baby tonight. Some of you about to give birth to vision right now. Some of you about to give birth to stuff that you've been travailing with. It's going to happen right now. We're pulling that out of you right now. You will give birth to that baby. That thing that you've been travailing with. But that thing I speak prophetically and the heaven is backing me up. It is going to come forth for you today in the name of Jesus. And so as that begins to happen, the baby dies. What happens when God gives you a vision and gives you a business and gives you a church and gives you a ministry and it dies? You say, what happened? Why did my car get repossessed? Why did I lose my house? What happened? What happens when, when the Lord bless 
bless you with something that died. He gave me this husband. He died. He gave me this ministry. He died. My sister died. My brother died. God, I thought you gave me this. How, did, how could you do this? And the baby died. And so the lady took the baby and put it in the room where the prophet prays all the time. And so there he goes again. And she goes and tell, go talk to the prophet. To make a long story short, uh, Elijah ends up back in her house with the baby. And the Bible says that the baby, and I want to I wanna give you this. The Bible says that he ran everybody out the room because when God's about to do something, stuff he's going to do privately for you. When people see you publicly, they're going to just think that you just came on the scene. But that's not what's going to happen. The stuff that God is going to do for you privately. He says, I'm going to get you in the secret place. And I'm going to bless you. Me and this uh, thing. Okay, here it is. So God says, I'm going to get you in the secret place. And I'm going to bless you. So there's some things that God's going to do privately for you. That is going to expose you publicly. And your testimony is getting ready to announce you. When you walk in the room, people are going to begin to look at you and know that you're not going to look like what you went through. It's going to be totally different. So the Bible says, here Elijah, what he does, and we're on this because I'm telling you, I feel the presence of God and I'm getting ready to pray. So the Bible says, let me get back to, to this. Okay, here it is. Um, I got to go to reset. So. According to society, God told me and spoke to me that he's resetting the system. And so I think that's, did you unplug that? Huh? Because, okay, so God says that he's resetting the system. So Elijah goes in. The baby, the baby is dead. Not a baby, the child is dead. So. The child is deceased. Elijah goes in and closes the door. And the Bible says that he, t he puts his eyes on his eyes. And he puts his, his, his uh, hands on his hands, his mouth and his nose on his nose. He prays. I'm sorry, my husband is trying to connect us. It's going to go on YouTube, baby. Your finger's in the way. So he prays. Thank you. He prays. And nothing happens, so he pray again. Then the baby sneezes seven times. How many of you know seven is the perfect number of God? So let me tell you what the doctor said about the sneeze. Because I got to I'm preaching this thing right now. I'm teaching this. It says when you breathe in foreign particle senses in your nostrils and sinuses detect the object. The senses signal the cilia, tiny hair-like panels that have lines or nostrils. Uh, and, and sinuses to move to expel and it irritates so the process is always idling at first gear so when the cilia is ready to spring into action when needed says study the ear nose and sp throat specialist says the study says that when you sneeze it produces the produced by a sneeze not only clears the nasal passage but it also triggers the cilia senses to kick the paddles into high gear for an extended period, about a couple of minutes. But in a sense, a sneeze works as resetting your system. In other words, when he began to sneeze the seven times, God knew that he didn't need to be restored. Because if he was restored, the same element that killed him in the first place, that young man was going to have to go back into that same place to help his dad out because his dad was old. He would have been immune to it again and he could be he, in the same situation could happen. And that's what's happening. We've been praying for God to give us restoration. And we end up getting a little restoration and back in the same situation. We've been asking God to restore us to where we used to be. And we get back to that place and then we find ourselves getting in the same situation. But God says, this time I'm not doing that. I'm resetting your system. As that young man began to sneeze, God reset his system that he was able to go back 
into the fields where he first, where he died at, and that stuff that killed him was not able to do it again, whether it was the son or whatever, because his system was reset. It was better. His immune system was higher. His body was better than it was. And let me tell you what the Lord is saying. He says, I'm resetting the system right now in your life. He says, I'm not restoring those things you used to have. I'm, re I'm resetting the system that that what used to take you out will not take you out anymore. That will used to cause you sadness. That will used to cause you to be broke. That will used to be cause you to be discouraged. That would had your back against the wall over and over. It's been like a cycle. It is over. God says I'm resetting the system. Not only am I resetting the system in your life, in churches, in the next millennials, with the new millennials. God says I'm resetting the system with government. Y'all don't understand. It is. It is. You don't understand why God has Donald Trump in office. You know, God had to go in and reset the system. He had to get someone in there that just wasn't political, uh, wasn't politics. Uh, he says, but you just watch. You just watch. I didn't need Democrat, even though he's supposed to be Republican. Y'all know he just do whatever he want to do. God says, I messed up the system in the White House. He says, don't look at Donald Trump. Look at me. Because I am resetting the system. And what things that used to be is not going to be. And don't make no mistake. Don't get it twisted. I am still in control. And God says, you know how when people start doing things and it has been the same and been the same corruptness over and over and over again. But there's been some people crying out for a breakthrough for our country. There's been some people fighting for crying out for a breakthrough for England, for a breakthrough for Africa. And God God says what I'm doing I'm using you to reset the system it will not be church as usual it will not be the same move of God he says Moses is dead but there's a new a new spirit a new freshness that's coming forth and he says you'll be better than you were yesterday God says that what took you out will not be able to take you out so you I tell the devil come on with your best shot because that what you try with me for evil God is turning it around to something good those of you that has been grieving over loved ones your system is being reset those of you that's been crying out and you have cancer your system is being reset those of you that's got having problems in finances your system is being reset God is bringing the people in from the east the west the north and the south don't get it twisted honey Christianity and serving Jesus Christ will not go away for God has got some remnants that will not bow down to bed and we will speak thus said the Lord we will speak the word of the Lord and the enemy will not be defeated I'm telling you right now he's resetting the system when you wake up in the morning you're going to feel like you're 16 years old you're going to have testimonies at the testimonies I speak to the spirit of death that's been hovering over you I curse it right now in the name of Jesus cancer you got to flee right now cancer we destroy it right now God is resetting the system the system is being reset in every area, even in the school system, even in the political arena, even in the financial arena, even in the medical arena. There's things that's getting ready to be invent, invented by the believer that God is resetting the system. He says, he says, I've had hidden treasures that's been on the side for so long and I'm getting ready to expose it. And God says, I'm getting ready to bring the wealth back into the church. I'm telling you, God spoke to me and said there will be more millionaires and billionaires in the house of God in this season than we've ever experienced before. You better get ready because it's not just restoration, it's resetting. You're going to be better than you've ever been, so you might as well get ready. God says a major breakthrough is coming. I want you to shout, he's reset my system. He's reset my system. All things have passed away, my God. And behold, the new is come. So you don't have a sad story. You're going to wake up and go to the doctor. They're going to be like, what's going on? Your counts. You, you, what's going on with cancer? We, we, we can't find it because the system has been reset. It's not like you have cancer. Cancer has invaded your healed whole body. And it has to go. When God resets the system, sickness and diseases, poverty, rejection, depression, Suicidal spirits, all of those things, 
He's resetting your system. The, God says, get ready. Those businesses that you've been wanting to come forth, they're getting ready to come forth right now. My God. Glory to God. So I'm going to be seeking the face of God because we still got to have prophetic voices that encourages our heart. You need to shout to somebody, we're resetting the system. All things will pass away, but God is bringing something new today. My God, my God, he's resetting the system. There's a new, you know, I'm, I'm sitting up here this year. I celebrate 30 years of ministry and 30 years of marriage. I've been in this ministry 30 years, 30 years of ministry and 30 years of marriage. And I've gotten to the point, everybody's not going to like you. <laughs> the worst thing somebody could call you is a crazy prophet. Now that right there, especially when somebody, anoint, God has anointed you to go into a region and you reject it. Y'all, there's some of you been rejected. But God told me to keep your, he said, be quiet. I haven't missed a beat. I am crazy. I'm so crazy. I'm so crazy in love with God <laughs> that I will do whatever he asked me to do. And so the issue is, as God is resetting the system, I want you to hear me. Elevation is going to come. And when elevation comes, it makes you deal with your insecureness. And it's important for you to deal with your insecureness. Because also your elevation, when it comes, it causes other people who are watching you to be insecure. And you don't need to come off the wall to deal with what they're dealing with. They're going to put rumors against you. They will talk about you. They will try to say who you think you are. You don't even have time to pay attention to that because your promotion is going to intimidate your enemy. Your promotion will intimidate your enemy and cause their insecurities to come out that will spread the rumors on you. But you don't have to be concerned about that. You deal with your own insecurities so that when God blesses you and promote you, you will not think it's about you. You will know it's about his kingdom. God doesn't promote us and blesses us for us to, 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 to just say we want to drive a car and have a big house. God is a big God. But that's why it's important for you to deal with your insecurities. Because if you don't, you'll think your promotion was about you. But all the time, your promotion was about God and what you were carrying. So it's important for you to deal with your insecurities. While you're in prayer, tell God I'm dealing with rejection. Tell him if you're jealous. Tell him that you're having issues, you're insecure, you love to eat, uh, whatever. And God, would, he's able to deliver you out of all of your problems because you don't want yourself to be a hindrance to your promotion. And promotion and elevation is coming. It's coming at a fast pace. And it's important that you embrace your season of promotion and stop making excuses for why you will be in that position to people who don't understand who you are. All you need to do is keep loving, keep loving on them because the Bible says love covers a multitude of faults. Keep loving on them and you stay focused to the, what God has called you to do. In this season, when I'm closing for now, I'm just praising God. I'm at another place. I'm, you know, just, you just at another place. When I was in January, it was the first time in a long time. I think in 1988, I had a visitation. And then I had another visitation when I was in um, uh, Dublin, Ireland with an angel. But this time in my shut-in, the Lord visited me, sat on the bed. Hold on, Lord, shut up. And he began to talk to me about resetting the system. And some things that he wanted to do with the body of Christ. And he said, I'm, give, I'm giving you a new anointing. And it's going to be, everywhere you go from this point on, there's going to be increase in finances, increase in churches, and increase. He says, just like that woman spoke to the, to, to the, to the woman who was barren. God says, I'm going to send you to places that's been barren, that's been struggling. And when you walk in there, you're carrying an anointing that will cause increase and enlargement of their territory. We've seen the move of God. We've seen it happen in the last two months. It is scary that when I go back to the hotel, I have to cry out to God and say, God, I know that it was not me, that it was you. Because that's why you got to deal with your insecurity. So when God is using you, 
you won't get a big head. God can't can afford to have you in this season with you wishy-washy with him. Know that it's God and that you're the one that's getting an instruction from God. And that the only thing different about you is that you're obeying God. Amen. So with that, we'll pray. And I want those of you that would, um, there's some things that we were wanting to do. Um, I got my website up. We're, we're redoing the whole, the whole office right now. Excited about it. We'll probably, you know, just being on Daystar and we're going back to Daystar and just, just the relationship that God has done and he's open up doors <laughs> and he's getting ready to open up doors for you guys. I'm telling you. Many major doors get ready to open up for you, and you will not be able to explain how it happened. All you have to do is say it's God. You didn't have to kiss up to nobody. You didn't have to pay politics. You didn't have to pass out your card because God knows your name, and he'll drop your name in people's spirit in the doors that you're supposed to go in. I want you to, um, we're re regrouping. I wanted to show you uh, some of the things that we've already uh, uh, done and we've got the desk in the office and we'll show you some of those things and we need some cameras because God said that we're going to really, really be, I want to really be doing a lot of taping on YouTube and um, on, on Facebook Live because he gave us this and I really want to be able to give people the word so they will understand what God is saying. I'm not saying I'm the only prophet because I'm not. We got some powerful prophets, and there will be prophets that will probably be on with me. But we're getting ready to network so the body of Christ won't be lost in what's happened. Excuse me. Make no mistake, though. God is in control. And so with that, I would like for those of you, if I've ever blessed you, if I've ever touched your life, if you could partner with me, we'll believe in God because we want to do some big things. I got to go to Africa. I want to, when I go to Africa, I always want to give my friend an offering for her orphanage and we're going to Africa. We got a lot of major cities. I'm thankful for my husband. He's going to be traveling with me. And this is something I've been dreaming of. And I think we're ready. We're ripe at that. He's going to be traveling with me more. And because um, after going through what I'm going through um, and, 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 and really producing and doing a lot of music and teaching also. And so we're trying to set up stuff, get all the equipment. But if you, those of you that will partner with me, we need partners. And those of you that will partner with me, a monthly gift of $20 a month, we're expecting like a thousand people to partner with us. You can go to my website, FrancinaNormanMinistries.org. Um, uh, um, or you can actually go to PayPal and put in my um, email address, which is profran, P as in Paul, R-O-F-R-A-N-N -N -N, at AOL.com. I'll go to my website and uh, give you my email address if you want to give the donation right now, $20. And we can get those of you that will commit to giving us to this ministry, $20 a month. We will be a blessing to where we need to go. We're going to other countries. We have Hong Kong is asking for us. Um, Australia is asking for us. Um, the, Dubai. And we're bringing the gospel in, in major cities and major countries. And I'm excited about that. But most of all, I just always want to be a blessing. I want to get to the point with my partners that when I go to churches as barren, when I go to churches, I really don't want to deal with having to take a love offering from them. I want to get to the point that the partners, we will already have things in place that so we could come in and be a blessing to people who are dealing with situations in churches as they're about to lose them and we're there to come in and teach them on economics and release the blessings of the Lord. We just got a couple of people and then we have this, this oh, it's backwards. Ooh. So we have Francine and Norman Ministry. You could write to us at P.O. Box 131490. Dallas, Texas, 75201. Um, P.O. Box 131490, Dallas, Texas, 75201. But you could go to my website. We already got our first, I want to show the name. We got our first partner. They sent the check today. In fact, we got another check today. We just thank God. And as we, when we purchase stuff with 
you partner with us, we will give you an update. We're not, we're, the kingdom is so important at this time that we're not trying to, I'm not trying to buy clothes with your, with you, with you partner with me. I got so many clothes that I'm giving them away. We're not trying to buy shoes and all that stuff or even, or even a car. God, we're, we're, our, we're okay. God has really blessed us with that, but we're trying to go into different territories and be a blessing as Elijah was to the woman who built them the efficiency for him to be in, but she was barren. We want to go to places who've been struggling or, or, or even if your church is big, but yet you're struggling in some areas. When the prophetic voice comes forth, things happen. Amen. So thank you so much. Uh, you can do a reoccurring payment if you like, Ashley. Um, and, and our telephone number, what's the telephone number here? They could call us right now for prayer. Um, those of you, after we get off, you also could call us for prayer. I'm, my husband and I will be available to pray for you in the office. You know, we just got the office phone. So I'm trying to see what the phone number is to give you the telephone number. You can call us. You can start calling us right now. We'd love to hear from you. We would love to pray with you. Remember, he's resetting the system. And I thank you so much for tuning in. Um, he's getting the number right now. And so you can either go to PayPal uh, and just give the $20 donation, Francino Norman Ministries, um, dot com. When you go to PayPal, you go to my website, Francino Norman Ministries, dot org. Um, so it's, uh, no, PayPal, you go email address profran p-r-o-f-r-a-n-n -N, at aol.com and then for my website francino norman ministries.org and on the website you can go on the website and get the address um the p.o box you can write it because some people still like to send letters <clears throat> but what's the tell you just sent the number to me the other day and so with that in mind um i think was, is you gonna get it? Well, I just just get, we just got the number, and I don't have my glasses. It's so two one four. No, that's no. oh, four. Can you see that? No, it's four six nine. It's a two one four number. That's not the that's not the Texas number. It is the four. Okay, call it. <laughs> you know what we could do? Why don't you call your number? And that's how you get it. Amen. Y'all know we raw, right? There's a yeah. number right there. Call the number. We got to hurry up. Get the phone and call. I want y'all to call for prayer. This is live. That's good. Y'all know this is live, right? <laughs> so he's going to call himself and we're going to give you the number. Those of you that want prayer, Lacey, y'all want to talk? You need prayer? We're resetting the system and we're getting ready to, you can call us right now live. We're by the phone and we're going to give you the telephone number. <laughs> Tiffany, how you doing? Hi, Lacey. Hi. Hi. Okay. That's the number. Amen. Okay, so let me give you the number. What's that number? What is it? 214, isn't it? No, man. It is 469, as I told you. Okay, the number is area code 469 469 458 458 3272. 3272. That's 469 458 3272. Okay? So you can call us for prayer. Um, hi, Beatrice. Powerful woman of God. Thank you so much. So we're resetting the system. Um, it's 469 458 3272. She just, uh, Victoria just posted. Thank you. Yeah, is that the number? 469-458-3272, right? Yes. They're posting it. That's why I'm asking you. Oh, they're calling. Well, we're going to be answering you, okay? So God bless you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for giving us the prophetic word. For today, God, we're resetting the system, and our lives will not be the same. We thank you for it. We're expecting a miracle. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, if you want to call 469-458-3272, uh, we're here to pray for you. God bless.